Uh, good morning. This is Jack Blum uh, pitching Dick Sporting Goods for you today, ticker DKS, with the help of my junior mentee, Will Steinhoffel. So just a little bit on the screening process. Uh, we looked at strong year-to-date performers with solid fundamentals and industry-respected names. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods is a leading omni-channel sports re- sporting goods retailer offering an extensive assortment of authentic, high-quality sports equipment, apparel, footwear, and accessories. They are really the last remaining national goods sports retailer in the United States. And uh, segments-wise, their hardline segment has 42% of net revenue, apparel and footwear 36%, private label 14 and then other accounts for the remaining 8%. So now to jump into the drivers, um, Dick's Sporting Goods is the complete omni-channel full-time consumer experience. They've consistently been the leader in the floor space, and they continue to capitalize on this dominance. Due to COVID-19, the company had to expand their e-commerce presence, and approximately 50% of these were mobile phone purchases. The company has a brand loyalty mode as well, as they have long-standing relationships with their brand partners, resulting in reduced costs and no hassle contract renewals. This directly affects their operating margin dominance in the retail space. These relationships have led to decreased spending and allowed their operating margins to stay between 5 and 7%, while retail averages are between 2 and 4.5%. Now moving on to the growth of their private label, for the past five years, DKS has been growing, slowly growing in their attempt to brand their own private label to be sold in their stores. While they have 15 plus offerings, the main players are Field and Stream, GSG, and Calia, with the latter two being targeted as an athleisure brand for men and women respectively. These brands are part of the management's dedication to mitigate risk from vendors while also growing the Dick's brand. During 2018-2019, these private labels accounted for 14% of consolidated net sales, which is second behind Nike. With the immense growth in the private label segment, management is confident the segment will account for at least 30 to 35 percent of net sales in the next four years. Then finally, to touch on the data and their consumer base, the Dick's brand name is one of the main reasons why the company has sustained itself during the COVID-19 pandemic. They have an extremely loyal consumer base, and their scorecard loyalty program has 20 million active users, which accounts for 70 percent of their net sales. Recently, Dix has, ha- has used this consumer data in an attempt to better predict consumer trends. This has resulted in better inventory stocking and decreased marketing spend to the tune of an inventory turnover rate of 150 basis points better than the industry average. Management is confident as more data comes in and their algorithms get better, it w- this will only lead to an- a steeper decrease in cost for the company. So, moving on to recommendation. Dick's Sporting Goods is the largest player in the sporting goods retail market. They're the only national chain with stores in all 50 states. Um, They've had a stellar year-to-date performance, and they still have room to grow uh, with, as I mentioned, the private label, the e-commerce. I I really do think, and Will thinks as well, that we will be able to grow. Um, With their complete omni-channel customer experience, increasing e-commerce, the growth of private label, it is recommended that Dick's Sporting Goods be added to the AIM Small Cap Domestic Fund Price target of $78.82, representing a potential upside of 26.55%. So, now touching on my valuation, uh, so in order to reach an intrinsic value for DIX, I constructed a five year DCF. Uh, I used a terminal growth rate of 1.5% and a WAC of 8.55, and a discounted intrinsic value of $76.29 was reached. Then I did a sense sensitivity on both the growth rate and the WAC, and that produced a price range of $64.16 to $94.90. I then did a relative valuation using the EV to EBITDA multiple of 9.72 times and a PE multiple of 20.08 times. By weighing these three models, 80, 10, 10, a price target of $75.82 each, representing a potential upside of 26.55%. Dix pays a dividend that yields 2.10%. Now I'd just like to quickly touch on my risks. So the first risk being reliance on vendors. Dix faces greater competition on vendors direct to consumers e-commerce retail presence and has potential to outpace sales with DKS. Dix is most vulnerable in its relationship with Nike as it is the leading merchandise provider and accounts for 40% of Dix's sales. Nike looks to build on its 2019 direct consumer sales growth of 11.75 in the coming years. Next one is real estate investments. So Dick's long-term lease commitments limit their ability to terminate underperforming stores and relocate existing stores more to desirable locations. Significant real estate investments also have potential to limit Dick's ability to phase out brick-and-mortar retail in response to growth in e-commerce-based sales. And then finally uh, is foreign trade uncertainty. Significant portions of Dick's vendor and private label merchandise is manufactured abroad. Reliance on foreign manufacturing leaves Dick's susceptible to inventory delays due to tariffs, geopolitics, 
political relations and public health crises like the one we are currently in, COVID-19. And finally, I would just like to touch on management. So first, uh, Edward Stack has served as CEO and chairman of the board at Dick's Sporting Goods since 1894. He is the son of the founder, Dick Stack, hence the name Dick's Sporting Goods, and has led the company through the, this incredible growth period. Lauren Hobart is a president and director at Dick's, and she has held the position since 2017. Prior to joining Dick's in 2011, Hobart held various positions at PepsiCo. And then finally, Lee Blitzke is the CFO. Uh, he became CFO in 2014 after 26 years within the company and was promoted from inside Dix, which shows uh, the great portion of their higher inside initiative. So just to wrap things up, uh, I think it's a great company. Uh, I really had a great time researching it with Will. Uh, I think it will be a great add to the portfolio. Uh, I really do look forward to answering questions in the D2L thread. And if you can join us Friday morning on Teams, me and Will will both be live, uh, ready to answer any and all of your questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kraus. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you, Dr. Wall, uh, for all your help over these past four pitches. Thank you so much.